So welcome back everybody. Of course, this is Dr. Keith McNally and today I'm going to talk to you about giving students voice and choice. And those are the words I'm going to use because so those are the words other people use. And so I think they're good words to use this time around. So voice and choice in what? So let me go back to say I know that being an educator in the 21st century is challenging. So I'm at a point where I have to make some pivots in the classroom. And I am also trying to reinforce the idea that that's probably a good thing for all of us to make some pivots and make some changes. And so I have three mottos that I kind of work with and that I teach um, through social media. And those three mottos are this, we need to change the way we think, we need to change the way we think about teaching and then, of course, we need to change the way we teach. And so what do I mean by all of that? I mean by we need to pivot into a new way of educating youth because I truly believe that the old standard doesn't work, okay? And personally, I am a daddy of an 11-year-old girl. So I know uh, her, her learning experiences because she's downstairs in the learning virtual environment and regardless if it's virtual hybrid or if we go back into the classroom it really doesn't matter uh, the the limitations and the parameters by which uh, teachers or educators work in uh, are also limiting to students and so we need to take some drastic mm, that's probably a bad word we need to make some really precise and direct measures to change the way we approach teaching and educating. And I'm going to use some examples, but I'm going to go back to the fact that I said we need to give students voice and choice. And so that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to change the curriculum or that we have to throw out state standards. And of course, that's blasphemy in education. And I'm not even going to mention that as a, a way of approaching it. What I'm saying is that as educators, we need to rethink how the classroom works. And what do I mean by that? Meaning that, yes, there are units and there is content and that there should be takeaways. So we focus on a very linear approach to uh, how we're providing knowledge or imparting knowledge to students. And so we give and we expect them to take. No, that doesn't necessarily work that way. What we need to do is collaborate, you know, wherever we need to be at, but collaborate more with our students. So I do talk about collaboration a lot in terms of project-based learning at the student level. Now I'm going to talk about it from the hierarchy teacher student level. So we need to start collaborating a bit more, giving students some input into Maybe not so much the what, but maybe the how. And so again, I'm gonna talk about project-based learning. So in PBL, we talk about giving students some voice and choice in terms of maybe an activity, uh, maybe a research project, uh, a point of interest, and a point of interest that will have personal or community value uh, wherever they are. So it could be family, it could be personal, it could be family, it could be community, it could be neighborhood, it could be global. It doesn't really matter the level, but I guess it depends on where you are in terms of your comfort level, personally as an educator, or wherever your classroom experience is. So I take a look at this from three specific points of view, from Timmy's, Tammy's, and Jessica's. Now at the time, Timmy was 11 years old and he was not personally impacted by homelessness, um, but he saw it in his neighborhood. And so he became a facilitator for change because he wanted to know more about it. And as he learned more about it, he actually wanted to, to improve the situation for the people that he saw and the people that he became involved with. And so that's another story altogether. Tammy, on the other hand, was a scientist. She was a 13-year-old uh, budding scientist, and her community was impacted by the residential and commercial building projects that were going on. And I say that because the wildlife were losing ground. And I always say figuratively and literally. And 
it was Tammy's motivation to learn and understand how the ecosystem was then off balance in her community uh, and what was happening to the wildlife. So she became very involved in that idealism that we shouldn't be destroying uh, the wildlife the homes that our natural wildlife have. And as you can see, I'm not a scientist, so uh, I, I definitely have trouble speaking to that at points, but I do understand the value that Tammy saw in wanting to make changes in her community. Jessica was the older one. So she, at the time she was 16, 17 years old and she wanted to be much like her dad. So he was an entrepreneur, he was a business owner, and she wanted to learn more about that. So each of the three approached their, their teachers to say, hey, can we look more into this? So again, student voice, student choice. So it wasn't really, they weren't, the teachers said, yeah, let's, let's take a look at this. So they weren't actually throwing out the curriculum or throwing out the units. They involved those ideas or they approached those ideas brought them into uh, the classroom and had students work through a PBL activity over a course of several weeks so that they could become better researchers, better learners, better critical thinkers, better collaborators, and better at simply reflecting upon what it is they learned because it involves so much more than just that one activity. So my talk today is really about re evaluating how we're approaching teaching and education in the classroom and collaborating more with our students, making the conversation go both ways, not just one way. So hopefully this was of value to you and I'll see you next time. Take care.